Hello everyone, welcome to Readout News. This is Sherry Diwali, and I was able to catch Lieutenant Governor Janice McGeehan for a few minutes on the phone. Join us as we check in to see how the campaign for Idaho's governor is progressing. I think my efforts are laser targeted on, on displacing Mr. Little and trying to stay above the fray with any of the other um, candidates that are running for this position. But there's a clear choice, the one, the proven conservative, the person who has a record, stand behind who I say I am. And I think that's really important for the voters of Idaho. You know, it's easy to talk talk about things, but it's not so easy to walk the walk when you're being put into these positions with a lot of lobby and heavy pressure. you got to stand strong on your principles. And I, I did that as a state representative, and I went home and I term limited myself after 10 years, and I went home with my integrity intact, and I felt um, glad that I was able to stand firm on the principle for what I said I was going over to voice and how I got elected. And I think that's really important, that people maintain their integrity in office. And there's a clear choice in this election, Terry, between Mr. Little, who is much more of a liberal, moderate Republican, and myself, who I am a proven conservative, and there's so many, so many instances where we have voted differently, um, and I've always voted in um, support of the taxpayer and following our the Idaho Republican platform, and voting to protect our individual freedoms, our liberties, our defend our state sovereignty, and, and protect our traditional conservative values. Uh, ask him pull his endorsement. Of the Republican incumbent in Idaho. Uh, well, the lieutenant governor that's running for governor. The, the lieutenant who's running to change. Yes. You have been in the news this week with one of your other opponents, and I know you don't consider him a val uh, viable uh, candidate, which I totally understand that with, based on the polling numbers. But he has drawn you into... Uh, the headlines by going to see uh, President Trump about your endorsement. Would you like to weigh in on that issue? Sure, yes. He, um, he was on national television and uh, making some comments. Um, he admitted to trying to steal my endorsement from Trump. And I can assure the people of Idaho that Mr. Trump's endorsement is 100% solid. I spoke to him just yesterday since he endorsed my campaign in, back in November. He has called me on a regular basis about every other week just to touch base and see how the campaign is going. He's given me good advice. I spoke to him just yesterday, and um, he offered encouragement. So there's no, no question about Mr. Trump's continued support of my campaign, and I told him, I said, Mr. President, when I become the governor of Idaho, and you're our next president, you and, we're going to do some great things together for America, and I told him I'd be giving him a call Tuesday night um, with, with a victory announcement. I told him he'll be proud of the way that we're running our campaign, because I am staying above board. I'm not a leveling attack on any of the other candidates. Although when they make false statements, then I will call them out on that. And so in this case, with Mr. Bradshaw, I, I contacted him, you know, to ask him why, why he was doing this. And then, you know, asked him about some of the statements that he said, that he was um, questioning some of my decisions. And, and so I had a chance to um, pin him down on that. And I told him, you know, he was challenging some of the false accusations that the fake news being out there about me for this whole past two years. And I said, anytime you want to sit down and talk to me and hear the, the, the rest of the story, the truth, just let me know. I'll be happy to, to, to tell you about the truth. And so I'm, I'm, I hope that he does that. I hope they don't take me up on that offer. Well, I guess, you know, only time will tell. 
is an organization of young conservatives who support the America First policies of President Donald J. Trump. Um, they've been grossly mischaracterized again by the fake news, the media, the mainstream media, as being a bunch of white supremacists. As if you know, and I saw I wasn't there personally. I was I, I was campaigning, but I did present a video to them, and I I saw the conference attendees online. I mean. The way the fake news presents is as if there all these people are sitting out there in the audience, you know, with their white hats on. And this, this is insane, the way that the media is trying to characterize true conservatives, those who believe in America First policies. And, and really, one of the most important things that they support is securing our borders, because with, under the Biden administration, all these thousands and thousands of illegals that are flooding across our border, this is how we're going to lose our nation. And that's one of the most important policies that, that these young conservatives support. On top of that, um, supporting, you know, restoring um, our faith and in our belief in God that uh, America is a blessed nation. I wanted to ask you about a poll that came out recently from a group in southern Idaho, um, and it, it showed you continuing to uh, trail Mr. Little. Um, our research shows that they only polled 549 people for that survey, and trying to, um, it, it sounded like they were almost trying to discourage voters from voting. Can you weigh in on that? Have you seen that poll? There's been a number of different polls going out, and you're right. Most of these polls are only, they're calling 500 people, and it's, it's really hard to know without seeing the tabs, you know, like, to, who did they call? Are these people, are these landlines, are they cell phones, are they registered Republicans, or it, it's there's so many uh, idiosyncrasies about the polling that unless you see the, the details, it's really hard to make any determining um, factors of these polls. But what I will say is that on the ground, what we're seeing is um, a growing groundswell of support for our campaign. Would you like to uh, discuss Facebook and IACI? Oh, yeah. So Mr. Little and some of his small ideas that he's bringing to Idaho happen to give a huge tax incentive written up specifically for Facebook to come to Idaho. They gave $50 million away of our tax revenues, and they munched up a bunch of our agricultural land outside of CUNA. Idaho is such a great state that you know, a big part of our agriculture is, um, well, that's a big part of our economy. And we're so um, fortunate to be able to help feed not just the people of Idaho, but the, the, whole, um, the whole country. And so they munched up our agricultural land. They're using up all of our water resources. And now we just found out that the executives of Facebook are now members of the board of IACI, which is Idaho Association of Commerce and Industry, the biggest corporate lobby, crony, corrupt organization in Idaho. This is what Mr. Little has brought to our state. This is the Facebook organization with Mark Zuckerberg and his millions of dollars who interfered in the 2020 election, and it's here in Idaho now. You don't think that those people on that board are not going to have a say in our future elections in Idaho. It's very, um, very concerning of what we're seeing happening to Idaho. This is why I'm standing up and fighting. This is why other conservatives like Dorothy Moon and Re Representative Giddings, and, and we've got a number of good, solid conservatives that are running against some of these Republicans establishment um, lawmakers that are not voting like Republicans, go to the 
website and find out who voted for that bill and get them out of office because this is terrible what they've brought onto us here in Idaho. Yeah, well, I, I want to just um, end on a positive note, you know, instead of, in, in spite of the concerns that I have with Mr. Little and the direction that our state is going, I have great hope for the, for the future of our state. And as I've been traveling around Idaho, and I've actually been listening to the people of Idaho, I've put together a 10-point plan, a conservative vision for a free and prosperous Idaho. If you go to makeidahofreeagain.com, you can pull up this plan. It's a bit of more detail about different policy positions in 10 different categories. Um, so, you know, I don't have time to talk about all of those today, but just to point out a few of these, uh, this plan, this vision for our state. We have such great natural resources in Idaho. We have we have about 12 rare earth minerals in Idaho that are not not being tapped. We have cobalt in Idaho, which can be used for the batteries. We have thorium, which can be used for small modular renewable reactors in Idaho. And so we need to utilize these resources. And we can actually become energy independent, not just as a state, but as a nation. But in order to get there, my plan calls for reopening the University of Idaho School of Mines, which we used to have a great program up there, but it was shut down. But we need to cultivate the, we need to cultivate geologists and engineers so that we can ha have the, the talent that we need to be able to utilize these resources in a responsible manner. And instead of having out of, out of country mining companies, here in Idaho, we'll be developing our own Idaho businesses and keeping the resources and the profits coming back to the people of Idaho. And the, the resources should come back to the counties. And so that's a big part of my vision for Idaho and, mm -hmm. and restoring um, our school system to support our, our parents. I, I'm, I'm an advocate for school choice, and we can't even get a true school choice bill passed through the legislature this last year, but I support returning control back to the parents, giving them choice, and uh, go, going back to the basics of teaching them the ABCs and the one, two, threes, and, and uh, teaching them livable skills, and just getting away from some of the nonsense that's being taught, some of the divisive uh, teachings in our schools today. So I, I just would invite people to go to that, makeidahofreeagain.com, and you can see for yourself some of that, some of those ideas of what I see that I believe, I know that Idaho will be a part of the resurrection of the greatness of America. God has a, a plan for our state, and I'm excited to be in the opportunity to help continue to lead out to have a free and prosperous Idaho and for the protection of our, our freedoms, our, our, our prosperity, our children, um, and we're going to do a lot to make Idaho free again and have a great future for our kids. Well, we're very excited to have you on the ticket so that we can vote for you on Tuesday, May 17th. We need a good conservative as governor because we have certainly have not had that in years. We would like to thank Lieutenant Governor Janice McGeehan for joining us here at Readout News. This Tuesday, May 17th, is the primary. Please do not forget to vote. Be blessed, everyone.